What's up, folks? Today we'll be reversing Linklist recursively. Let's get into it. All right, all right. Question of the day. Reverse the Linklist recursive edition. Now, before we think about this big question, let's review what a linked list is. So remember that a linked list is just a series of nodes. Let's take a linked list with three nodes. So the first node contains the value of 1, that points to another node containing the value of 2, points to a third and final node containing the value of 3. And this last node points to x, which means null. This null means no more nodes after this node, so this is the end of our linked list. The question wants us to reverse this linked list, so after it's reversed, it should look like this, where the node containing 3 is at the front, points to our good friend node containing 2, which stays in the middle, and that points to the last node, which now contains 1. This last node points to null, so it's the end of our linked list. Alright, so we know that a linked list is just a series of different nodes. We know that we can describe each node using the node class, so to make our lives easier in the future, Let's write that out really quickly. We have our class node. And inside the node class, we know that each node has a value. So for example, the first node has the value of 1, second node has the value of 2, third node has the value of 3, and so on. So we know that it has an int value. And we also know that each node points to another node. So the node containing 1 points to node containing 2, for example. And here, the node containing 3 points to null. So we know that it has a pointer of type node, and we can call this pointer next. Okay, this next pointer allows us to point to another node, and this value is the value that each node has. All right, so going back to our problem, we want to reverse this linked list recursively. Well, the approach that we're going to take is going to be destructive. And destructive means that when they give us a linked list, we aren't going to make no copy of it. Instead, we're going to edit the original linked list and make it look like the linked list that we want. So destructive pretty much means no copy. We're going to change the original. Seems like we're living life dangerously. Destructive approach, recursive too. But don't worry about it. Let's get into the implementation. Boom! Implementation. Let's go. Okay, let's think of an example that isn't too hard, isn't too easy. Three nodes. Link list, first node containing one, points to node containing two. You know this story. Boom. Three node link list. Okay. After we reverse this link list, we want it to look like this. Node containing three points to that node containing two, finally points to that node containing one. Okay. Before we start, there are two things we have to remember. The first is that our solution is recursive. Having a recursive solution means that we look at this problem and we're like, wow, this is a really big problem. We want to reverse three nodes in total. What if we could reverse a smaller problem, like two nodes? And then that's still too big, so let's reverse a smaller problem than that, just the one node problem. That's a recursive problem, or that's a recursive solution, where we break our problem down into smaller and smaller pieces until it's just right, it's bite-sized, and because we can solve the smaller problem, we can expand outwards until we solve our biggest problem. The second thing we have to remember is that we're always given a pointer to the first node in our linked list. So let's call that pointer cur, and that would point to the node containing one. Okay, so we want to break our problem down into smaller pieces. Here we saw that when we're given a linked list with three nodes, we might say, hey, let's split it up so that we solve a problem with two nodes first, and maybe that's still too big, so we solve the problem with one node first. So something that we can do is look at this problem we separate the first node from the rest of the linked list, and we say that we want to reverse this smaller problem first. But this is still somewhat of a big problem, there are two nodes. So let's split it again. And our even smaller problem says this is now our first node, and this is the rest of our linked list. When you're left with the node by itself, this is already reversed. So all you have to do at this point is to start connecting this node back to the node that came before, and this is now reversed, so all you have to do is connect this node back to the first node. And as a result, your entire linked list is now reversed, simply because you first looked at the problem, you shrank it down into smaller problems, and every time you solved a smaller problem, that allowed you to connect that now reverse list back to the node that came before. And that connection allows you to reverse this slightly larger list until you reverse the entire linked list. So that's how we are gonna break down our problem. 
let's break our problem down into two subproblems. The first subproblem, just the first node. We know that we're always going to hook the rest of the linked list back onto the first node. The second part of the problem is just the rest of the list. This is the part that's a smaller problem, and we want to reverse the rest first, and we keep doing that as long as our linked list is greater than one node. Okay, we know that eventually we'll have to connect all these nodes back onto the first node. We also know that the first node will always stay over here. We also know that the second node will always connect to the node that came before. But we know that we want to reverse this node as well. So what we can do is keep a pointer to this second node. Let's call that next node. By doing this, even after this is reversed, we'll still have this pointer. This will allow us to connect this node, wherever it is, back to this first node over here. So something else we have to do is store a next node pointer. OK, so now we've stored the second node. When we look at our given linked list and the linked list that we want, you'll see that we also have to null the dot next reference of this node. So in this case, after we store this next node reference, we have to set cur.next to null. So we have to set cur.next to null. This makes it so that our first node will not point to any other nodes, because at the end of our reversal process, it will become the last node. So we can't have it pointing at any other nodes. OK, cool. Now what else? Well, we know that we have to reverse the rest of our linked list. So let's do that. Reverse the rest of list. This means that we basically, after we set these pointers, we forget about the first node. We let the reversal run its process, and that reversal will first reverse this, then it'll set a connection back onto the node that came before. So then we have to connect rest of list back to first node. So in this case, First, this would connect back to the node that came before, so that would be the second node. And then the node containing two would point back to the node that came before it, which is the first node. And once we reach this point, then we're done. Okay, so all of these steps we have to assume will work for our smaller problems. We assume that they work for a node of size one, and that going through this process and allowing to connect back to the node before it will allow us to solve the problem size two, will go up to the problem of size three. Okay. So we, now that we have those assumptions, let's look at a code implementation of our procedure. Let's say public node, because at the end of the day, we want to return this reference to the first node in our reverse link list. Let's call this reverse. And let's take in a pointer called cur, because we know that they always give us the pointer to the first node in our given link list. OK, so let's think about the possible cases we could have. Here's the thing. They could be trolls and just give us null. The null reference is technically a node of node type, so we have to account for it. All we have to do is say, wait, if cur equals equals null, you can't return, you can't reverse null, so all you have to do is just return null. Nothing to do here. But life isn't always that easy, and when it's not as easy as this, then we have to go into our recursive procedure, which is all these steps. So. Let's first think of another type of case, which is, let's say they gave us a node or a linked list with just one node. So in this case, could be pointing here. Well, you can't really reverse a linked list with just one node. You would just return itself because it's already reversed. So in order to check if it's only one node, we see if it's cur.next is null. And if it is, all we have to do is return itself because it's already reversed. This line will become the base case for our recursive solution. Because as you saw over here, in order to solve this three node problem, first we looked at the problem with two nodes, and then we looked at a problem with one node. And here's where recursion stopped, because this was already reversed. So after we reverse this list, all we had to do is make this connection back to the node that came before. And after this was reversed, all we had to do is make this connection back to the node that came before the second node. OK, so this is where we stop all our recursion. <laughs> What if our node, or what if our linked list is longer than one node? Then we have to go into our else case. Sad, but hey, recursion's got to come in somewhere, right? Okay, 
So up here, remember, we have to set our next node point. So let's do that. It'll always be the pointer that comes after curve, or the node that comes after curve. Let's say node next node equals cur.next. That'll be the second node. Then we have to set cur.next to null, which we set over here. So all we have to do, cur.next equals null. And that gives us our x out over here. Then we have to reverse the rest of the list. And here's where we do something called taking a recursive leap of faith, where we assume that our reverse method will work for these smaller problems. Here, let's write it out. So let's call the rest of the list, which is everything besides the first node, let's call it rest. And in order to get rest, we'd have to reverse this entire linked list. We know that next node points to this entire linked list. So we can say equals reverse of next node. So over here, we're pretty much assuming that rest will give us a pointer to the first node in this linked list reversed. Well, you can see over here that if we reverse this smaller linked list, we would get something that looks like this, where it's node containing three points to node containing two. In this case, rest would point to this node because it's the first node in the linked list that we want to reverse. Okay, so we have to, over here is where we take a recursive leap of faith and assume that a recursion will work out just fine. Okay, what do we have to do after that? Well, assuming that a recursion works, you remember that our node containing one will be drifting out over here. You'll have the curve pointer attached to it and it'll still have a reference to null, but no nodes will be pointing at it. So we want to make that final connection of this node containing two over here. And in order to do that, which is to connect the rest of the list back to the first node, we would just say next node dot next equals cur. Okay, we know this works because next node will always be a node that comes after cur. So it'll always connect to the node that came before, which pretty much, is re pretty much reverses our linked list. We're able to use recursion over here, taking our leap of faith and knowing that eventually our recursion will stop when we reach the one node case in order to solve this larger problem. Okay, everything looks like it works fine. All we gotta do now, all we gotta do is return the correct reference. We know that at the end of the day, we wanna return a reference to the first node in our reverse link list. Well, the interesting part is that we know rest will always point to the first node in the smaller reverse link list. And we know that the smaller reverse link list will have the same structure as the larger reverse link list in that the first node will always be the same. So even when we reverse the entire link list, rest will still point to node three, which is what we want. So all we have to do is return rest. And that my friends is a recursive implementation. It's weird, but it's okay. In the next section, we'll dive into a more specific, slightly more complicated example. We'll go into exactly how this works. Let's go. Let's go folks. Here's our try it out. So we're given a linked list with four nodes. We want to reverse this guy. On the right hand side, we got our code implementation. Lower left hand side, we're going to keep track of all the recursive calls that we make. All right, let's get started. We know that cur will always be given to us and it will point to the first node in our linked list. So let's go on with our method. Is cur equal null? Nope. Is it only one node long? Nope. So we go into our else. We set next node equals cur.next. So next node over here, and then cur.next equals null. So you get rid of this, this becomes an x. All right, here's the recursive leap of faith. We say node rest equals reverse next node. This eff effectively means that we're splitting it into the one node case and this three node long linked list case. So here in our recursive calls, we know that we've called reverse on cur. We now need to make another recursive call. For each call, I'm going to add a number after each of their pointers. So for example, for this call, it also has its own cur pointer because a linked list is being passed in. So I'll add cur, so I'll call it cur1. So in this case, since we're only looking at this list, cur1 will point over here. Then we go into the body of this second recursive call. We check if these are true, no, no, and then we set node next node 1 equals cur1.next because we're only looking at these three nodes. So next node one. Okay, then we go here, cur1.next equals null. 
So now we make this null. Okay, here we make another recursive call. So say node rest one equals reverse of next node one. So pretty much here, we're going to get rid of this node two and then only look at these two nodes, the rest of the linked list. But here we're going to make another recursive call. And all of the pointers for this call will have two after them. So since we're only looking at these two nodes, we know that cur2 is the first node in that linked list. Okay, we go back here. If cur equals null, nope, nope. Next node 2 equals cur2.next. So next node 2 points over here. Next node 2. And then cur2.next equals null. So here, this becomes null. You'll notice that these structures are starting to look pretty similar, which is good. It shows that recursion is working correctly. Okay, now we go into yet another recursive call. We want node rest2 equals reverse of next node 2. Okay. So now we make another recursive call. Let's call that reverse cur3. This is our fourth recursive call. Wow, good stuff, I suppose. Okay, so now we say cur3 is this node because we've effectively broken down the problem three times and the fourth time, it's just this one node over here. Okay, so now we check if it's equal to null. Nope, if it's dot next equals null. And this is actually true in this case. So all you have to do is return this. So this call is now complete, and the result goes back into this call. Remember that we made this call simply because we wanted node rest2 equals reverse next node2. So now rest2 points to this last node over here, because that was the result of this call. Okay, so because this is done, now we can continue and finish this method call. So now, since we're in this call, we look at all the pointers with 2 after them. Next node 2 dot next equals cur2. So next node 2 is this last node, and then its dot next should now point to cur2, which is the node that came before. So this part is now reversed. So we return rest2. Rest2 points over here, so this is also complete. And the result of this goes back into here. Remember that we called this because we wanted rest1 to point to the reversal of the rest of the linked list. So rest1 rest1 will now point to this last node over here. So rest1 points to this last node. And then we have next node one dot next equals cur1. So next node one dot next now points over here. Let's loop that around. No. Next node one dot next. Cur1. Okay, let's clean that up really quickly. So now we have the last node pointing to the second last node, which points to the node that came before. Then we say return rest1. So rest1 was this, and this is now done, and this goes back into the outermost and our first recursive call. So now we have rest pointing to the result of this call, and the result of this call was just this node. So rest will now point to this last node. Then we continue and finish our outermost call next node dot next equals cur, and now we're looking at pointers without any numbers after them because we're on the outermost call. So next node dot next equals cur. So now we've connected all these nodes in the right order, and all we have to do, return rest, which is, as usual, the last node. Cool, so all we have, at the end, our linked list looks like this, which is a reversal of our given linked list. And that, my friends, is a recursive implementation done right. Good stuff, as usual. Let's go. Folks, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. As usual, leave your feedback down below. If you liked the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want to see the iterative solution to this problem, check out this link up here. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.